Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Well, I showed you a tutorial on adding a paper lace edge to journal pages. I've gone ahead and finished putting together multiple pages. In my journals, I generally use eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper folded in half, and I usually use about 10. This is the Sunny Mornings collection from Calico Collage, so Sunny Mornings, and I printed this a long time ago and I want to make a journal cover to go with it. So I kind of dug around in my stash for some things and I thought I would show you what I have. I have a piece of canvas that was printed and it was a misprint. It was given to me and I thought I'd use that as my base to be my journal cover. So basically, I want to attach some things to this. And how I determine the size of my journal covers, generally, if I'm not putting it inside a Midori cover, I will make them the same size. If they're going to be a standalone journal, I'll make it about an inch if you measure around and add it up it would be about an inch bigger than the inside so it'll be a half an inch here half an inch there half an inch here half an inch there so i'm not giving you exact measurements just about a half an inch on each side an inch total to get the enough of a cover if you want so i've got a piece of canvas laying here the next thing that i have is a piece of some burlap again this was given to me so i thought it would be kind of cool to put this down somewhat in the center i'll have a little bit of a gap on either side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my rotary cutter i'm going to line up with my ruler here and I'm going to come just past the edge and cut this. My self-healing cutting mat allows me to be able to use my rotary tool and I'm going to pull away some of these fibers on the edge so I'll have a little bit of that frayed look. I like that. I am going to sew this on my sewing machine. So to start with, I want to help adhere it into place. So I'm just going to put down a little bit of some Aline's Tacky Glue to help hold that into place until I get done sewing. I have some sunflower fabric that's been torn in about a three and maybe three and a quarter inch strip. And again, I'm going to go just beyond a little bit of the edge here. I'm pretty sure I have enough. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter again and cut off this edge. I'll use this as a guide and I will cut another piece. So I'm just going to flip this over and then just cut this piece. Now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of glue and adhere this to the front. Put a little glue down. I'm just putting little dots. I just need it to hold it long enough until I can get to the sewing machine. And I don't want a lot of glue because the glue takes a while to dry. I'll repeat that on this side. Now I've torn the edges of this piece in order to uh, get that little bit of a frayed look. So what I'm going to do is just kind of gently grab some of these fibers off the end and pull them. And that'll give me a little bit of a frayed look on the edges that I cut. All right, so I've frayed those edges just a little bit. So now I wanna put something down in the center and I happen to have another little piece. This is some lace that I had left over and I think I've got the wrong one because it's too short. <laughs> so another little piece I have here and I'm gonna lay that down the center here and I'll use my cutting tool again and cut off the excess here. So I just wanna make sure I'm up to the edge, right about there. And I'll put that in my lace bin. We'll use it some other time. So this time I want to help adhere this into place. So I'm just gonna fold it back upon itself and I'll just place some dots on the back of this lace. Again, I am gonna sew, but I want to have this held into place until I'm done sewing. All right, so these pieces are 
glued together I will put something on the inside in a little bit we're going to continue with the outside first I'm going to set this aside and I cut a strip actually I ripped a strip of the same sunflower fabric here that is the width of the fabric usually when you buy fabric it's probably in calicos about 45 inches wide so this is approximately 45 44 inches wide and then I have a little bit of some lace that I thought would be really pretty if we put it on top of the sunflower fabric so what I'll do is kind of lay this over here out of the way is put down some dots of glue and I'll do a little at a time, make sure I got the right side up, and then lay this in the glue. And I'm just going to glue this down. I will sew it on my sewing machine. So I'm just, again, gluing this into place so that it's easier to handle. Beast having to use pins, because sometimes pins you end up stabbing yourself and then they're in the way. And then I'll just cut off the excess. Then I'll take this piece and fold it in half so I know where the middle is. I'm going to come back to my little canvas fabric covered piece and fold it in half so I know where the center is on that. And I'll feed this through, lining it up. I think that's about where I want it in the center. So I'll flip this back and then just add a few dots of glue to help hold this in place. And I'll flip it over and do the other side. Now, if you're not going to use a sewing machine, then you'll want to use a generous amount of glue. You want to allow it to dry. You may even have to put something heavy on top of it in order to get it to stay in place. But I'm just using a Lean's Tacky Glue because it dries clear. It dries relatively quickly and works perfectly for what I'm doing. I'm going to trim up this a little bit. I want it to not be quite so long. All right, so I've got the fabric portion done and I'm just kind of waiting for the glue to dry. We're going to go over to the sewing machine and stitch this into place here in just a moment. Okay, I think the glue is dry enough. What I want to do is go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on either side of this piece of lace all the way from one end to the other. That will attach it to my cover and it'll also attach the lace to the fabric. And then I'm going to stitch down this side and this side and then I'll come back. Okay, so I just have a standard sewing machine set on zigzag stitch. I have standard thread, standard needle. I've got it set on two and two for the width and length. And I have black in my upper and my lower. And I don't have any problems with sewing on my paper and fabric products that are going to be put into my junk journals. Basically, I find that as long as the glue is dry, I'm not going to have any issues. So I'm just going to start stitching and go all the way across on the strip. When I get to the end, I'm going to raise my presser foot and rotate my fabric around and then stitch along this edge. And then I'll repeat and go down the other side. So I've stitched down the full length here and I've changed my mind. I was going to stitch on this now, but I think I want to go ahead and make my inside cover. So let me show what we're going to do. I have a piece of yellow cardstock. If you don't have, you know, big cardstock, you can look around. Maybe you have some wallpaper samples or even wallpaper that you could use. You can use a paper sack from like a grocery store, but I want to use this bright yellow and I want it to fit just inside my cover. So this is a 12 inch piece and I can tell that it needs to be just slightly shorter so we're going to trim off about a quarter of an inch of this 12 by 12 on one side and then if I remember correctly this piece is approximately I'm going to do it from the inside nine and a half inches so I'm going to go nine and a quarter and cut this so now I have these two pieces and I have this little skinny yellow piece and I'll put that in my recycle bin to use later, probably to make some paper. I'm going to go ahead and apply some distress inks. This is going to become a pocket on the inside of my journal. And I just remembered why I didn't 
I sewed this the way that I did the first time. And so I am going to change my mind here in a moment. But what I'm going to do first is add just a little bit of glue across here after I stitch down this edge. I'm going to stitch on real fast. So I just stitched across here just for decorative purposes. And I'm going to take a little bit of glue and put it right on the edge here of my pocket and glue it in a place so it can be drying while I sew the rest of my cover, prepping it for the pocket. All right, so I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and do as I said I was going to do at the beginning, which was stitch right down this area here, and then we will adhere the inside. All right, so this has been sewn together. I'm going to flip this over. This is going to go on the inside. So I'm just going to line it up where I want it and add some glue to glue it into place. I decided to have the screen printed portion on the inside of the cover because it showed through the sunflower fabric on the front. And this way you kind of can tell there's something back there. Maybe, maybe it was an old flower sack from many, many years ago. Who knows what it was, right? Use my bone folder to kind of help spread that glue around. All right, so I didn't get any glue on the edges, so I'm just going to start on one side and then go all the way around the perimeter of this piece. And I'll do it with the cardstock side up so that I can see that I'm getting the edge because it should get all of the front because it goes beyond the cardstock on the inside. And as you can see, it stitches through all the layers. So I've got the burlap, I've got the canvas, I have the lace, and I have the cardstock, and it's going through right right easily there is the cover and there is the cover sewn together so here is the inside and here is the outside so i'm just going to take this kind of giving it a little bit of help and fold it over if i was smart i would have folded the piece of paper in half before i glued it down but i forgot to do that sometimes i get in a hurry this is for a single signature journal. I have other tutorials that show you how to make a wider spine if you want to do multiple signatures. So check those out. All right, so now I've got my journal cover. Here are my journal pages. Before I put the cover together, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this journal made by. This is a new rubber stamp that I offer in my shop. Make sure I got it right side up. And then I'll go ahead and sign it. All right, so what I want to do now is make sure that all my pages are lined up the way that I want. So I'm going to go to the center here and kind of look at them all, make sure that I've got them all lined up. This one may be a little bit taller here. And that's going to go right in the center of my journal. So I'll center it from top to bottom. And then I'll get my handy dandy junk journal tool bag and get out my tools. We're going to do a pamphlet stitch, so I'll show you how that works. I've got my big binder clips, my Tim Holtz craft punch, and then I have book binders needles. I do offer these in my shop, so if you've been looking for a really strong, sturdy needle that has a small hole in it, that it's elongated so it doesn't make a big hole in your journal, I offer those. All right, so first what I'm going to do is temporarily bind my pages by using some binder clips or giant paper clips. Key is you don't want your pages moving on you while you are sewing it together. So I have a little template that I made that tells me how far apart to make my holes. Basically, I just put one in the center and then one at the top of the bottom, about an inch in from the top of the page. And I want to fold this up in a V. If you have a bookbinder's cradle, that's, this is the time where you'd get it out and put your book in there, and that way it stays all folded up. And I'm just going to use my Tim Holtz craft pick and poke a hole all the way through the layers into my fun foam that I have underneath down the center here. Now I need some waxed linen thread, so I'm going to cut three times the height of my journal in thread. So one, two, and three. 
I'm going to start with the center hole and pull this out to the outside, but not all the way through. I want to leave a little bit of a tail on the inside. And sometimes when you're dealing with fabric, it's hard to see the hole on the outside. So I'll do this. I will put my craft pick back in the hole and then I will use my needle on the other side to follow where that just came out. That way I poke it back through the correct hole and don't accidentally make an additional hole. And then I'm coming up and back into the center hole. Oops, I almost got my tie caught. And then again, I'll poke my hole back through to the outside because sometimes you can't see it. There we go. And then we're going to slip this one under this first stitch. I don't need the needle, so we'll put it away. And I'm going to look to see that I don't have any um, knots or it's not pulled or anything like that. And we're going to pull this in opposite direction. So this piece went under and went this way. This piece I'm pulling that way. And we're going to do what's called a square knot. Some people call it a surgeon's knot. Just tie a couple of knots. I'll do three this time. I'm going to leave my tail a little long at the moment because I may come back and put some charms or something on here. Today I just wanted to show y'all the basic idea of putting together a cover. Oh, I caught in the lace. All right, got all my paper clips off, put them back in the tool pouch, and then this can tie shut. So we have a little bow on there. So we're going to undo that. Now, if you want to add more to your cover, maybe you have a saying or sentiment you want to put on there, you could do that as well. And I will put something on top of this for just a little while, and then it will relax eventually and not stand up so much. So we'll open it up. And we have a pocket here that we can put things. We've got fibers everywhere. So here is the Calico Collage Sunny Mornings page. And I've added the stitch page that's the stenciled with Tattered Angels there. Made a little tuck spot there. Did some stamping on this page and used a Don't Forget to Fly rubber stamp. This is from Beeline Designs. It's the, I think it's called the Small Butterfly. Over here, I did some Franken page. So these were book pages that I applied paint to through stencils and directly. And then I tore them into or cut them into smaller pieces. And then I sewed them down onto another sheet of paper. And then here's one of my triple pockets that I show a tutorial in my uh, tutorial arsenal. This is the library card rubber stamp that I offer in my shop. And I just stamped that on some linen cardstock. I thought that'd be good for journaling space. This is another rubber stamp from my shop as well as the leafy branch, I think that is. And this is passionate. I think that's right. And memories. I think I meant to put this library card in my other journal. I may have to swap this out. <laughs> Some more stamping on the page. Made a little tuck spot here if you want. This is one of my mixed media journal cards where I took some pictures and sent them to Norella along with some scans of some gel prints that I made. And then she made them into a digital download. This is from the Sunny Mornings collection. Another one of my Franken pages in the background. This is the small diamond stencil in the background. This is my new retro flowers uh, panel stencil, flowers, retro flowers, that's what I called it. Some scrapbooking paper. And this was one of those no, uh, tear off notepads. And I did make this where it's kind of a pocket. So if you want to stick something in there, you can. I've got some more journaling cards here, a long tag. And then this was a clear envelope that I had or a vellum envelope. And I just stuck one of the journaling cards inside of it after adhering a couple of the elements oopsie, from the kit. Another one of those notepads. I kind of repeated some of the same patternings throughout. This is one of Norella's library pockets that comes in the kit. 
Lots of journaling space in this one. There's a little file folder so you can journal in it. You could even turn it into another little journal if you want. A little pocket on the mixed media page. And this is something different that I did. I took some of the tags that were rather large and I didn't want to stick them in a pocket because they stuck out too far in my opinion. So here's what I did. I took some other papers in my stash and trimmed them to be the same size and stitched across here with some fabric and I made it into a little notepad that you can write on. So there's a couple of pages here. And then this will slip over the page like that. So it's just kind of a little interesting interactive piece. So you can see the stamping. And then there's the last page. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing my take on making a fabric cover for a junk journal using some scraps of fabric. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I do go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I show how to put together journals. And that is a perfect time where you can ask questions and ask for information on how to do something, whatever it may be. I'd love to have you come hang out with me. And let's see, what else? Come check out the Facebook group by Linda Israel, as well as the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, and follow me on all the social medias. I've got the links down below in the description box. If, again, you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And what else? Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this journal cover. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.